Today, we're going to be diving into the next upgrade that you can make to your smart home. This is truly one of the best ways that you can upgrade your smart home, and that's with motion sensors. This is the next video in our basics of a smart home series. This comes after our contact sensor video. If you haven't watched that or haven't watched any of the other videos in this series, I highly encourage you to watch them because they all build upon each other. We're going to be talking about things and principles and devices that we've covered in previous videos. So I really encourage you to take a moment, click the link on the screen and watch from the very beginning the basics of a smart home. What exactly is a motion sensor. It's a very small device like this one here that has a small little sensor on the front. This one's fairly small as you can see. Sorry my camera doesn't want to focus. It's a very small sensor on here. You've probably seen ones in the past with a lot larger sensors or even some of our old school, old school security systems have even larger ones. To give you the most simple explanation as to how they work is it's kind of like a flashlight where it sends a beam of light in one direction and it's looking for when that beam gets cut off through motion. So it can be various types of motion that cause the motion sensor to trip. That's the most layman's explanation as to exactly what a motion sensor is and how they work. So they're looking for some type of motion in their field of view, and then they will trigger motion on or motion off, and then send a command to your smart home hub or any program that it's running and set up an automation. In most cases, people utilize them for security systems, so they're going to trigger the security alarm. Most motion sensors now are upgrading to what we refer to as PIR, Passive Infrared. It emits an infrared light that is looking for heat signatures that change in, how f in its detection range. A lot of these new PIR ones go up to about six meters in distance. They have a lot larger field of view. For instance, some of the ones that I purchased recently have a 127 degree field of view, which is pretty massive whenever you consider some of the older models having a lot less closer to the 100 to 110 degrees when it comes to their field of view. And a lot of times they're shorter in that roughly around four to three meters versus now we're getting into the six meter range with our motion sensors. Technology has come a long way with motion sensors. They're getting a lot better and becoming a lot more affordable. We'll talk about affordability later in the video, but one of the big things that we're looking for is something called PIR motion sensors, passive infrared sensor. There's one other type of motion sensor that's not really a motion sensor, but it's gonna fall under this category. I'll make a video later on because this is a lot more higher priced item and they work for very unique scenarios and can be very difficult to set up when you're just learning the basics. Even I'm still understanding how they work. What this is referring to or what I'm referring to is something called a presence detector or presence detection. Acara, which is a brand that I love, I really love their products, have come out with something called a presence detection detector. A presence detector is detecting presence not motion. And to explain that is if you were standing in front of a motion sensor and you stopped moving, eventually it's going to detect that you're not there because there's no motion. With a presence detector, it's always going to be able to tell that you're there as long as it's within your it's it's within its field of view. It's not detecting and registering the beam of light being removed it's actually emitting a field of an information that is able to tell where you're at inside that range. So presence detectors are a lot more advanced. There's a little bit more you can do, but they come with a lot more of a price tag. Now there are times where you could replace your, pre your motion detectors with presence detectors, and we can do that later on, but there are still a ton of different things that you can be doing with your motion sensors. This leads us into our next part. What? can you do with a motion sensor? Well, the big thing that I love to do with them is the ability to trigger lights on and off. 
In the previous video, when we talked about contact sensors, we talked about how when you open the door, the light would turn on, and when you'd close the door, the light would turn off. But that leads to a big problem. What if you go into a room by opening the door, the light turns on, you turn around and close the door, and now the light turns off? How do we keep that light on? That's where the motion sensor could come in in this place. So if your motion de detector is detecting motion, then it tells the light to stay on. So even if you close the door and it's detecting, then the light stays on for you. It's very simple as that. I have a big open area kitchen. And so what I do is whenever the motion sensor detects motion in the kitchen, it turns the lights on. But if it goes three minutes without detecting it, then it's going to turn the lights off for me. I don't have a door. I don't have a way to use a contact sensor, but I can use motion when somebody enters a specific area. Now this area is so large, we're considering having to put a second motion sensor in place to be able to cover all of it. But what's really great is the ability to walk into a room without utilizing a light switch. So it is a seamless application when you're using motion sensors. As I mentioned earlier, another application for motion sensors are security systems. You can have certain motion sensors detect motion only at a certain time or run an automation at a certain time. They're always going to detect the motion, but after a certain time or maybe after the alarm is set, that's when it's going to actually send out the notification, letting you know that it detects somebody. You can put this in the garage, the main level of a home, really anywhere in the house that you want to be able to detect motion. Another funny application that I saw somebody utilize a motion sensor for was putting it in the hallway where their children sleep. So whenever their children would leave the bedroom, it would actually announce it on their smart speaker that the child was out of their bed, whether it be nap time or even during bedtime at the middle of the night. That way you knew when your child left the room. You can also combine this with a contact sensor, but it's a great way to be able to see things that are happening in an area with a simple motion. Another great application is with fans. If you're somewhere that's really hot, you can have the motion sensor turn on a fan when somebody enters that room if it's above a certain temperature. Most smart speakers have a temperature built into them or thermostat built into them so you can determine what the temperature is in a room. And if it exceeds a certain temperature, then it automatically turns that fan on, but only if it's detecting somebody's in that area. There's a lot of great different applications for motion sensors. If you're already utilizing them, drop down in the comments below what your favorite way is to use motion sensors. Now, probably the hardest thing that I've found with motion sensors is where to place them. Placing them can be difficult because you want to be able to maximize the usage of it without having to get multiple sensors. So again, I mentioned I have a big, large kitchen. Finding a place to put it where it saw the most common area of the kitchen where we're most likely to be was somewhat difficult. My kitchen actually has two different entrances. You can enter from the living room side or the dining room side of the kitchen. We generally come through the living room side of the kitchen. So I set the sensor up on a wall that would see that entrance so that when people come through that side, the lights are going to turn on. What's really great is there's a light switch on both sides of the room. So even if you come through the dining room side, there's still a light switch very close by to be able to turn on the light. But also if you just carry on through where it's usually pretty bright, we have a lot of little motion activated lights that plug into the wall. So even in the middle of the night, there is light throughout the house. You could walk right into the kitchen and turn and it will turn the lights on because you'll still pass by the sensor. Now I did set up in the automation that it's limited to certain times because I don't want the animals accidentally triggering this light in the middle of the night and it's constantly turning on and off, on and off all night long. So I did limit it after a certain time that they don't just automatically turn on with the motion sensor. So generally when you're looking to place motion sensors, you want them to be nearby a door so that when you come through the door or the entrance to a room, that it's going to notice you and trigger your automations so they happen as soon as possible. But you also want that sensor to be able to see the general area that you're going to be in. Another place is my garage. I wasn't able to find a place where it could see both the door I come through in the garage when I'm entering from my house to the garage and also when I'm in the garage. 
There was no way to get both of those without having to use multiple sensors. So I placed it where I'm going to most likely spend my time when I'm in my garage so that it sees me and it doesn't shut off my lights. The light switch right next to that door that I come through, I can hit it easily. Now I might add a second sensor in the future, but for now we'll just use the one, but I can hit the button when I come in and then I can enter my garage and the lights will stay on as long as I'm in its field of view. Now, if I leave the garage and my hands are full, which a lot of times they are, I'm coming in and out of the garage with stuff, or maybe I was coming from the freezer and I needed a bunch of things, I don't have to worry about hitting that light switch a second time because after a short delay, those lights are gonna turn off for me. The thing to keep in mind though, is you don't wanna set that delay to be instantaneous because the moment it stops detecting motion, those lights are gonna turn off and chances are you're gonna still be in there. So you wanna set it to sometimes a minute to three minutes or even up to a five minute delay whenever you are setting up those automations. I currently have mine set to a three minute delay. To me, it's enough time that if I were to step out of its field of view, I would then step back into its field of view in some capacity during that time frame, so that even if I'm in and out, I'm still crossing by and keeping those lights on. I mentioned a moment ago how well these combine with contact sensors. As I said, if you enter a room and then close the door and you have a contact sensor on there, then once that door closes, the light's gonna turn off unless you set that up to a delay, which you still should be. That one might not need to be as long as you would with a motion sensor, but I would still encourage you to make sure you always set whatever the automation is for shutting lights off on a delay. These combine really well with them because again, like my garage is, I could put a contact sensor on that door because it's one of those doors that automatically close behind me when I go in there. So I could have it when I open the door, the light turns on. And if there's no motion and the door is closed, then after a certain amount of time, those lights turn off for me. What's really great though, is contact sensors and motion sensors can work independently of each other but they also combine so well together in some of these applications that we've already discussed. Now, I do wanna take a moment and talk about some of the cons when it comes to motion sensors. Now, the big thing that I have with them is the fact that they only detect motion. As I discussed earlier with presence detection, there's a whole nother world of what happens when you use a presence detector instead of a motion detector. But in a lot of cases, that presence detector could be five or six times the cost as a simple motion detector. So you're gonna to wanna to pick and choose where you put all of those presence detectors. And sometimes you're just gonna to wanna to keep it simple and go with a motion detector. What I've found is that they cannot distinguish between an animal and a human being. All they're doing is seeing motion. So depending on where you place them, sometimes animals trigger them. A lot of times these newer model ones will have the ability to not detect anything that is a certain height from the ground. Now this does cause it to not trigger when small children are nearby, but basically what it's doing is saying, hey, if this part thing is super low to the ground, we assume it's an animal and so we're just not going to trigger the automation. The last con that I feel with motion detectors is their cost because you sometimes need so many of them. As I mentioned, my kitchen needs multiple of them. I've really strongly considered a presence detector in there instead of the motion detector. My concern is how large of a space my kitchen is. It's a very long elongated space. And so I don't know if the presence detector will actually work in there. And I have a weird corner in there as well. Overall, you tend to have to purchase not one or two motion sensors, but sometimes five, six or seven of them to be able to place in all the different areas to set up the automations and the seamless motion of movement around your house to make your life amazing. Now, teaser for the next video is next video, I am going to be diving a bit more into automations. One of the previous videos I did on automations absolutely went amazing. People were loving it. They really liked the idea of me diving into and actually showing you how to automate your life through automations and showing you how simple it really is. So the next video, we're going to actually open up Tuya and Home Assistant, and we're going to dive into automations. We're going to show you how to set them up, show you some of the things that I do and some of the things to keep in mind when you are building these out. The last thing I wanted to show you was where to get 
motion sensors. So I purchased these really inexpensive ones. I just wanted to try some of these ones out. This is the one that I had purchased earlier I showed you. It's a simple one. I don't even know what the brand was because there was nothing on the box. Um, but it was, I think I paid $33 for three of them, which roughly ran them just shy of $11 a piece, which was really great. I think that $10 range is where the sweet spot is for these motion sensors. Now there was a time when motion sensors wouldn't run you anything less than 20, 25, or even $30 for the decent ones. These ones run off of two AAA batteries. The battery life is supposed to last a good year for me depending on how often you're triggering it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how they are so far. The biggest con I'm noticing so far is there's about a 40 second delay for whenever they stop detecting motion, that the detection of motion is fairly quick, but the removal of motion is a little bit longer. So I'm just having to adjust my automations. If I want a three minute delay for lights to turn off, then I'm really dialing it back to like two minutes and 20 seconds is about where that that is falling because there's already been 40 seconds of no motion. It, it, it should register a little bit sooner at that point. I'll link on the screen or show you on the screen the ones that I purchased. There are so many out there. Take a few minutes, look at them. You can also buy additional features inside these. Some of them have temperature built into them. Some of them even have vibration built in them or humidity. I really just needed the ability to, to detect motion. That's all I needed. I have various other ways for humidity and temperature around my house uh, and vibration. I just really haven't felt a need for that one quite yet. That is all for motion sensors today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, motion sensors are such a great tool that you can utilize to help level up your home into a true smart home, or as I like to call them, an Intelli home. I thank you so much for joining me today. If you really enjoyed this, you liked it, go ahead, hit that subscribe, hit the thumbs up, drop a comment as to what your favorite automation is down below. I hope you guys will join me for the next video, or if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, go take a moment, check those out now. Thank you again, guys, for joining me. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.